Thank you so much for joining us on All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. So today we're going to be spending most of the program getting reactions to the Integrity Commission report in relation to the Prime Minister's statutory declarations. But first, our colleague Kirk Wright is at the Prime Minister's residence or near the Prime Minister's residence where police have been deployed. And Kirk, what can you tell us? Thank you very much, Dion. Well, I was near his residence uh, probably about seven minutes ago, and someone from his security detail came and instructed me to, that, you know, that I couldn't say that I couldn't stay there. So I'm driving around. I'm still in the area. But when I got here about seven o'clock tonight, I saw no less than uh, six police vehicles, uh, some of them from Specialized Operation, one from PSTEB, and, um, you know, Persons in the area have been saying to me that it's it's unusual that uh, to see so many police officers um, driving around and stationed very near to the prime minister's residence. Um, I, I inquired, but you know the police officers are very tight-lipped. However, I spoke with a senior officer, um, and he told me that it was as a result of a bomb threat. That I can't confirm, but. The police officers are still here. The numbers have reduced, but there's one still stationed very near to his premises. And um, I, I saw, or probably about five minutes ago, I saw several police vehicles, again, from specialized operation driving around the area. Um, one police told me earlier on that is just normal operation, normal procedure. This doesn't look normal to me in any way at all. So I'm here and, um, you know, I'll be monitoring as much as I can to give you the latest update. Just to let you know as well, Kirk, we just this minute got a statement coming in from the police that said the deployment was initiated in response to credible intelligence gathered by the police indicating a legitimate security threat to the prime minister and his household. They said swift and effective action successfully repelled the threat and that they continue to maintain a presence at the location. So that, in addition to what you've seen, I think at least gives us a little bit of an idea. As you said, we know you're going to continue to monitor. Thank you so much, Kirk. We appreciate you joining us. Certainly. Thank you. Kirk right there, joining us from near the Prime Minister's residence, whereas the police are saying there was a legitimate security threat. Our news centre continues to monitor the story. We'll have developments in later newscasts. Now, back to our main story on all angles, which is the Integrity Commission and the report that was tabled in Parliament yesterday in relation to Prime Minister Andrew Holness's statutory declarations. In studio with me, we have Marlon Morgan. He's a member of the Jamaica Labour Party Communications Task Force. We also have the People's National Party spokesperson on finance, Julian Robinson. Later in the programme, we hear from civil society advocates, Daniel Arch, as well as Jeanette Calder. First, though, let's take a little bit of a look at what came out in the report that was tabled. Now, before I tell you what the report said, what is the report about? So I realized that these 171 pages, it's a big report, that all this has confused a lot of people. And honestly, I do think it could have been presented in a better way, a clearer way. But anyway, we are where we are. So let's try and get things clear now. First thing for you to understand is that the report deals with two issues, and I realize people have been confusing the two. The first issue has to do with allegations that Prime Minister Andrew Holness did not declare to the Integrity Commission that his name was on four bank accounts that he supposedly jointly held with other people. The second issue had to do with questions about what is called illicit enrichment, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So it says the process of examining Mr. Holness's 2021 statutory declaration commenced in 2022. On September 30, 2022, the commissioners referred the matter to the Director of Investigation for Investigation because of concern that Mr. Holness's declaration was incomplete because of omissions. The director found that there were omissions of bank accounts from Mr. Holness's statutory declaration, which meant that the declaration was incomplete and inaccurate. So this is where now the four bank accounts that you've probably been hearing about come in. 
but one of the financial institutions messed up things. Back to the report. A major issue that arose was that the currency in which one of the accounts was held was reported in US dollars instead of Jamaican dollars. And the director said this altered the course of the investigation, which was at an advanced stage. And then the financial institution indicated it had made an error. As a result, the investigation was closed on February 19, 2023, and a report sent to the commissioners. The omissions were found to be inadvertent, so no finding of culpability made on the part of Mr. Holness. The statutory declaration, though, was inaccurate and incomplete, so that first investigation now was closed, but the declaration still not certified. So Mr. Holness was asked to and did give the commission an updated statutory declaration for 2021. This declaration was examined by the Director of Information and Complaints, and it raised further concerns to include prima facie means on the face of it that Mr. Holness owned assets disproportionate to his lawful earnings. The result of that is that the 2021 statutory declaration was referred by the Commission to the Director for investigation a second time. So this second investigation now started on May 3rd, 2023. Just to make a note, so when you hear talk about how this has been going on for three years, not so. This second investigation started about 15 or 16 months ago. So the director of investigation starts the investigation, and this is what he said he did. A big part of the report is about how money was moving between Mr. Holness's account and between the accounts in these three companies which were connected to him. Imperium Investments, Estate Bridge Development, and Positive Media Solution. So what did they find? Let's look at the issue of the four bank accounts first, and I'm going now to the ruling of the Director of Corruption Prosecutions for this part of it. First of all, she noticed the alleged four accounts, one held with his father, two held with his mother, one held with a former constituency worker. And what she found is that for two of the accounts he said to have held with his mother, bank documentation only showed her name. The director ruled that there was insufficient evidence that during the 2021 period that he was in fact a joint holder of the account. And since there's no evidence or insufficient evidence to show that, he didn't have any duty to declare those two accounts. The third account in the name of a former constituency worker and Mr. Holness's name, he had a duty to declare that one. And the other account was allegedly held by Mr. Holness and his father. He had been added to the account as a minor, but was still on the account at the relevant time. So he did have a duty to declare it. Having established, though, that he had a duty to declare two of the accounts, the director ruled that Mr. Holness's explanations that he was on his parents' account for survivorship, if one of them dies, then the money in the account would go to him without having to go through probate. And he said he couldn't remember why he was on the other account. She said there wasn't any evidence to counter his explanations and there was insufficient evidence on file, therefore, to establish that Mr. Holness, by way of omission, made a false statement in his statutory declaration. So no charges were to be laid and that's it in relation to the bank accounts. So let's go back now to the investigation report and look at the issue of illicit enrichment that was being investigated. Let me just give you a definition first of all, because illicit enrichment is an offense under the Corruption Prevention Act. And what the act says is that where a public servant owns assets that are disproportionate to his lawful earnings and on being requested by the commission or any person for an explanation, and he doesn't give an explanation or he gives an unsatisfactory explanation, the person can be liable for prosecution. <music> Okay, so we're going to go to the break. When we come back, we'll hear from our guests in studio. Stay tuned. We'll soon come.